Welcome back, Whistle Watchers. What a great weekend of Six Nations Rugby again. A victory for Scotland, uh, Ireland over Wales, and uh, Italy just a goalpost away from a famous victory away to France. Let's get into it. First up, uh, which was the biggest talking point of the weekend, was the exciting game between France and Italy. Now, We've also spoken on Whistle Watch about the key areas that the referee are keeping on top of. And one of those is safety. With a head contact process which was bought in in 2019, it's to encourage players to be aware of the consequences of head contact, to get them to change the tackle technique, to get lower, and also referees to be strong on head contact and to deal with it for the good of the players and for the good of the game. An example of that was in the uh, France Italy game with uh, Dante being red carded. So we have the usual process, we have foul play, it reaches the yellow card threshold, it goes to the bunker and then the bunker reviews it, which means that the game can carry on in the meantime and they upgrade it quite rightly so to a red card. So we have foul play, we have head contact, we have a high degree of danger and therefore we have a red card all about making the game as safe as we possibly can italy have never beaten france in france they've beaten at home in rome i refereed one of those games once but they've never beaten them away in france so the big talking point of course the end of the game 13 all history in the making the ball comes off the post but what happens around that okay so we have the ball falling off the tee that is pretty much irrelevant in a penalty of what the opposition can do. Now, the opposition can charge a conversion once a player indicates that he's going to start his run-up. In a penalty, you can't. You cannot charge a penalty until the player has made contact with the ball. So we have a French player coming up because the ball has fallen off the tee. Now, the French player probably comes up, not to charge it, but comes up because he can see the ball falling off the tee and now thinks that he can charge. He can't. So really, what should have happened here? What the game management and sensible decisions should have been here was to say, look, no, the ball has fallen off the tee, stop the clock. So you stop the clock, the ball has fallen off the tee, replace the ball, send the French player back and let the player reset to take his kick again, rather than him thinking he has to because the clock is going on. But the key thing is here, as a lot of you have been discussing, is this. If you felt that the French players were encroaching illegally and the kicker misses the kick, then in law it's quite clear the kick is to be retaken, another penalty awarded 10 metres further on. Remember here we have a young referee doing his first Six Nations game and uh, congratulations Christopher Ridley and Sandra Pirardi on doing their first Six Nations games as well. Italy a little bit unlucky, the French very lucky. Now one that's got you all talking is about the fake carry by Lucchesi in the same game. Right what you can't do is you can't deliberately look for a penalty. So for example remember years and years and years ago Players would dummy from the base of the scrum, they dummy from the base of the ruck. It's no different to the back of the moor. So you're dummying to try and get the opposition to come offside and give a penalty away. So we don't want to encourage that. So dummying or faking that the ball is out of the scrum, the ruck or the mall to encourage the opposition to come offside to win the penalty is not part of the game and therefore will be dealt with as a free kick for faking or dummying. Ireland's win over Wales means that they have equaled the record of consecutive wins in the Six Nations, which was 11 by England. And they are on course to do a back-to-back -back Grand Slam, which was done the last time uh, by France back in 1998. So let's get into the game then. Wales penalty try, Tad Burn, yellow card, right. A good discussion point here. So what you can't do in a mall is you can't unbind and then sort of swim around the side of the mall. So if you look at Tad Byrne, he unbinds and then he goes forward like a swimming action onto another player. That is illegal. And in doing that, he causes the mall to collapse. So we do have a penalty and the situation close to the goal line. Yes, we do have a cynical action and a cause of a mall to collapse. So we do have a yellow card. Next question is, would a try have been scored? Now, a lot of you are debating this. Some of you think that there were other Irish defenders there or the Welsh players under the ball and a try would 
shouldn't have been scored. And if that's the case, then it's just a penalty and yellow card. But the officials look at this and they felt that Tad Burns' actions contributed to what happened. And if that hadn't happened, then Wales would have probably scored. Thus, they arrive at the decision of a penalty try. In simple terms, if you think that Tad Burns' action prevented a probable try, it's a penalty try as well. If you think it didn't, then it's just a penalty and yes, a yellow card. Let's go up to Murrayfield where I was watching the game. Scotland, England, Calcutta Cup history made. Scotland winning four Calcutta Cups in a row against England. The first time since when, do you know? I doubt any of you will remember this because it was back in 1896. Right. Let's look at the Van der Merwe yellow card. After scoring three tries, what does he do? He gets a yellow card. Why? Well, we have a tip tackle. So he brings a player up above the horizontal. Now it's all to do now with what happens next. We have an illegal action up above the horizontal, not bringing him back down safely. Then we have foul play. So good work with the TMO. The TMO comes and tells the referee we have a tip tackle here. Uh, I've looked at it and it's just a penalty only. The referee says, okay, thank you. And as he goes to give the penalty, he then sees the replay on the screen. So the referee feels by looking at the replay that for him, that is more than a penalty and then upgrades it to a yellow card. Right, let's go to Dewan van der Merwe's try. Where, well, which one of them? Yeah, the one that hits the corner post. Right, quite a few years ago, the corner post itself was part of the field of play, which meant if you touched that, you would be in touch or touching goal. The flag itself never was. So if you actually hit the flag, it was fine. But if you hit the corner post, you were deemed to be in touch. They changed that, so the corner flag now is not part of the field of the play. So if you hit the corner flag and you don't hit the ground below it, the touch or the touching goal, then it's fine. And for this reason, the try is a try. If you'd have done that quite a few years ago, the try would have been disallowed. So there you are. That's it for Whistle Watch. Uh, some very interesting questions in now on your Emirates fans questions. So let's get into them. What was your pre-match meal before refing a game? Oh, now then. Tended to be my breakfast was always a fried egg sandwich and red sauce for breakfast every time. And then my meal in the day usually would be um, a bit of chicken and pasta or something like that. At Ian Murphy 777 asked, do you miss refing, Nigel? No. Not one bit. No, look, I enjoyed it for when I did it for the best part of 34 years uh, and I enjoyed every moment of it and I wouldn't change it one bit. But no, I'm enjoying life on the farm here now. I still referee a couple of local games and I'll probably get back into refereeing a few more local games uh, next season. Uh, but to answer your question, uh, no, I don't miss it. But I still do enjoy being part of the refereeing uh, of it all in different capacity. The Rugby Deo. Uh, now I'm going to answer your question. As I mentioned to you on social media, uh, and the question is, uh, Nigel, uh, what were some of your favourite anthems to hear before a game? That was my favourite part of refereeing was when you go out to warm up in the field and the crowd start filling the stadium and then into the change rooms, getting mic'd up, getting ready and walking out then behind the two teams into the cold run and standing there for the anthems. I love that bit. Now, my favourite anthem obviously would be, would be the Welsh one. I love the Flower of Scotland. Uh, when you're refereeing in Scotland and have the piper just starting off on top of the stadium and then the music stops and then they sing the second part of it, just the crowd. That is very something special. The La Marseille when it's in when it's in Paris is absolutely special as well. Islands call in Dublin. The Italian and the Argentinian had a bit of wump to it. Uh, but obviously, above all that would be my hymn Adonade. Well, that's it for your MRS fans questions this week. Thank you very much for sending them in. Much appreciated. Really do enjoy answering your questions. Uh, that's it for another weekend of Six Nations. We're taking a break now, but we'll be back after round four with some more whistle watch for you. Till then, bye-bye.